So Adobe has added a very cool, very helpful new tool to the latest versions of Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Lightroom. And Lightroom meaning the cloud-based version of Lightroom desktop and mobile. Lightroom Classic does not currently have access to this new feature because it is provided as an early preview, but I assume by the time this is final and goes live, it will be in all three applications. What is it? Well, let's jump in here and take a look. Okay, so what you're looking at here, this is, uh, we're in Adobe Photoshop and this is an aerial image of mine that I took a number of years ago in the highlands of Iceland. And uh, when I say aerial, I mean like an actual aerial image. This is me in the air, in a plane, with a camera, not like you know, a drone or or whatever. This is uh, me high up in the sky in this tiny little uh, Cessna aircraft. And it's just me and a handful of other people. I was there participating in a photography workshop and the plane was just bobbing and weaving and moving up and down. And, you know, with the wind, you know, coming through the valleys and over the mountains and everything. It was absolutely insane and, and kind of, it was exhilarating and it was exciting photographically, but also kind of terrifying at the same point because I just basically stuck my head in the, you know, stuck my face in the viewfinder, just tried to block everything else, uh, you know, everything around me out and just focus on uh, taking photos. I hope to go back and do this, uh, you know, again at some point uh, in the future, especially since I have a better camera now. Uh, than what I was shooting with back then. That was This was like a Canon, you know, 5D Mark IV, if I remember right. I mean, you know, not a bad camera, but, you know, obviously we have better, you know, technology now. Okay, so here in Adobe Camera Raw, what you want to do is open up the Color Mixer panel and then click on Point Color here. And this is the interface that allows you to select a specific hue and then make some adjustments to that hue using an eyedropper. It's just a little more exact than using, you know, the sliders in the HSL area over here. Come over here to point color, grab the eyedropper, and let's say that I want to edit the, you know, this kind of like earthy yellow brown kind of color here. I'm going to use the eyedropper. I'm going to select that. And then down here at the bottom of point color, you will see this little slider here, a new slider called variance. And at least at the time of this video, this is an early access uh, feature. And that's why you see this little uh, early access uh, badge here. Now, effectively, what this slider does is it bends the hues, it bends the neighboring hues uh, that are slightly warmer or slightly cooler alongside your selected hue. It either creates more contrast by pushing those neighboring hues further away, or it decreases their contrast and creates more uniformity in that color, in that selected hue, by pulling them in. And let's just say that I want these hills to look a little more uniform. Like I want there to be less color variety. Well, now I can just grab this variant slider and pull it down and to the left and notice what's happening in the hills. Notice how they're beginning to average together. All the colors are getting closer and closer together. And I think you can most notice this in the little uh, like patchy areas of green moss, like this area over here. If I pull down variants, see how the greens are getting more yellow? I mean, you can go all the way and you can actually push them down so that there's no variance at all. So that they're just effectively the same color as my target hue. Or we can go in the opposite direction. Let's go in the positive. And if we push variants up, well, now we are adding additional complexity. We are adding more visual interest. We are increasing the range of, of hues which are related to that target hue, to the one that we selected with the eyedropper. Now, something important to remember when you're using this tool is that you will get different results depending on you know which hue you are targeting, which one you select. So for example, let's just say that you know I still want more variation. I still want more variety in the colors that are being presented here, except instead of choosing this yellowy kind of, you know, brown color here, I'm going to choose the greens. I'm going to choose the green moss here. So again, you're going to use this eyedropper. So now we're going to add variants by targeting a different hue. Look at what's happening. So now the yellows, those yellows that we were targeting just a minute ago with our other uh, eyedropper, they are turning more red. They are being pushed further away from green because we are increasing the variance of green. We are targeting green and we are pushing 
uh, the neighboring hues of green further away. So because yellow is left of green, yellow is being pushed further into the warmer tones, into those oranges and reds. And so that's why the colors are shifting uh, the way that they are. But we can go in the opposite direction here. Let's pull variance in the other direction and notice what happens. Now those yellowy kind of brown tones that we were editing before, they are getting closer to green. They are being pulled further towards that hue that we selected. So we get the same kind of, you know, minimal simplified appearance of color like we did when we were targeting our first color and pulling down its variance. But now because we selected a different target hue, we're getting a slightly different appearance, a slightly different color palette. So, you know, simple results uh, either way. It just, it all depends on which color you select. So in some ways, I guess a good way to think of it is when you are selecting a color and increasing or decreasing its variance, you're not necessarily editing that color. You're editing the hues which are neighboring that color, which is a little bit different mentally than I think, you know, the way that we usually think about editing color, where we select a color and we are editing that specific color. But here you are editing the neighbors. And then we have these tools up here above us, these old, you know, tools, which, well, old, at least within the past couple of years or so, whenever it was that Adobe added point color, we have these additional tools here at our disposal that we can use. We can do things like increase or decrease the luminance of the color. I think a little extra luminance is actually helpful. Uh, we can increase the saturation or maybe uh, if we don't like the the results we got by using variants, we can pull back on saturation a little bit to make it look a little more natural or bump it up a little bit to bring in a little more color. And then again, we can shift the hue. And notice here that the variance is being maintained. The relationship between our target hue and the hues to the left and, the, and to the right of our target hue, they're all being you know shifted together as a unit when we are adjusting hue here. So variance is a different type of tool. It's more of a relationship tool, I think is probably the good way or, or one way to, to think about this. Now, this new variance tool is the kind of thing that I could definitely see, you know, like portrait photographers using it. I think that's probably one of the, the most obvious use cases for this, because a lot of times when editing skin, you can get like little, you know, like little patches of red in skin. And oftentimes portrait photographers like for there to be more uniformity in their skin tone. So something like this would bend the reds and pull the reds closer in towards that base uh, skin tone color that they're looking for. But the reason I'm excited about this tool and the reason why I think this is so useful is because I think it absolutely has practical benefit with landscape and outdoor photography as well. Because a very common thing that you'll get into is, you know, you may have blue skies and you, maybe you want there to be more variety in the range of blues that you're getting in the sky. You want to increase their fidelity, bring more visual interest to that area. Or you could use it for situations like this, you know, where you have yellows and greens and oranges, and maybe you want to simplify it and bring the visual noise of the image down. I think that's another way to think of this is that the more colors, the more rich colors, the more variety of colors that you have in your image, the greater the number of things there will be for the viewer to look at and potentially be distracted by as well. So if there's too much color, if there's too much variety and you need to kind of like calm it down a little bit and and, uh, you know, rein it in some, well, you could apply that negative variance, which is a different thing from, you know, how much saturation it has or how much luminance a hue has. This is more about a hue and its relationship to other hues. And this is something that I feel like, you know, we've been doing for a while in the HSL slider. I know me personally, like I've done edits a number of times where I've bent, you know, like yellow further towards orange and bent orange further towards yellow or, you know, red further towards orange or, you know, whatever it may be, you know, basically like moving those sliders in opposite directions in order to bring them closer together and reduce, reduce that color contrast and create more uniformity there between the hues. But with this, it is a single slider. You don't have to go into the HSL panel. You don't have to think about color theory or any of that stuff. It just makes it really simple and really easy to do.
And again, remember that even though this is, you know, designed to be used with raw images, that doesn't mean you always have to use it with raw images. You could use it with JPEGs, you could use it with PSDs, just by creating a merged, you know, rasterized layer in Photoshop, open up that camera raw filter, and then you can go in and make these color adjustments uh, much easier and much quicker than, you know, we've been able to do before. So anyway, really cool feature. If you don't see it in your version of Photoshop or Lightroom, uh, make sure that you have the very latest version. You might want to update your software and hopefully uh, sometime in the near future, this will be added to Lightroom Classic uh, as well. That's it. Uh, thanks for being here, everyone. If this video was helpful, please uh, do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up down below. I would greatly appreciate it and uh, I'll see you next time.